Hello viewers, welcome back. In this video tutorial, I'll explain the procedure to create a 3D chair which can be used along with a dining table, a dressing table or with a study table. Take your own time to try this tutorial. When you complete this exercise, you must have learned some key concepts and ideas related with creating complex profiles which is highly essential in furniture modeling. To create each and every object in this chair, we will make the profile first and extrude it after keeping the UCS in the desired plane. But to sketch the profiles, we will be using the original images of the chair as references. So you will learn the technique to trace the profiles after keeping the images in the background. In fact, this chair is the dining chair at my residence. We will create a true replica of this chair in 3D. We will make the model first, then we will assign the materials. I have incorporated all the necessary files along with the video description of this video. So you are ready? Let's get started. To start with, I'll change my units to centimeters. So I'll click on application button, drawing utilities, units. I'll keep the linear unit type to decimal, decimal precision to two places and the insertion scale unit to centimeters and I'll just give OK. Now I'll insert the photograph of the side view of the chair to trace the profile. So I'll go to insert tab and I'll click on attach button and I'll select this particular image. You can get this image from the video description. I'll just give open and you have the attach image dialog box. Here you can see the preview of the image and uh, you will get the same options which you get in the insert dialog box while you insert the blocks. Now I'll click on OK and I'll just click a point over here. Then you can just drag to get a, a random height. Then just make one more click. Now you have inserted the photograph of the side view of the chair. Next I'll trace the profile of the side view using a polyline. So I'll click on polyline button. Then I'll start from this point. Then I'll click on arc option. Then I'll select the second point. Then I'll click a point somewhere over here. Then I'll move all the way straight up. Then I go to arc again. Okay, I'll just click to draw that arc. Click the end point of the arc there. Then I'll switch over to line. I'll type L for that. Then I'll click a point over here. Then I'll go straight up. Then I'll go to arc option again. And I'll select the second point. Just go to second point and I'll click a point over here. Then I'll pick the next point there. Likewise, you can go on tracing any number of points. Only thing is you have to exactly follow the profile of the side frame while you trace the polyline. Now I'll just fast forward this because the procedure is same. Polyline, arc, second point, then go to line if it's a linear segment. While picking the bottom point, I'll make use of point filters. So I'll give dot y off, end of the bottom point on the left side. So I'll select that and dot x can be picked from there. I've used point filters because both the bottom points should be along the same horizontal line. Now I'll pick the next end point. Then I'll go to arc option again and second point and I can go on tracing the profile to complete the polyline. Now I have completed the profile of the side frame. Once you finish it, you can erase the image which you have inserted to trace the profile. So I'll go to erase tool and select the image and erase it. Now we have got a profile. The next step is to bring the profile to the correct dimensions. The distance between these two endpoints is 50 cm. I'll just go back to the 3D model and I'll check out the dimension. In the 3D model, I have incorporated this distance as 50 cm. So how will you bring this dimension to 50 cm? For that, I'll just draw a line or a polyline starting from this end point and I give the value 50. Okay, it's a small line which has got an end point somewhere over here. Next, I'll go to scale command. I'll click on scale from the modify panel and I'll select the object. When I'm asked to select the base point, I'll click this end point as the base point. Now I'll use the reference option of scale command. I'll just click on reference. Now I'm asked to specify the reference length. Reference length is this end point to this end point. So I pick this distance. Now I'm asked to give the new length. 
when I'm asked to give this length, you can simply pick this endpoint. This is the endpoint of the line which you have drawn just now. Just click on that. Now you can see that this length is automatically adjusted to 50 centimeter. If you want to verify it, you can just give dist command. So I'll type dist for dist and I'll select this endpoint and this endpoint. Now the distance is displayed as 50 centimeter. We don't need this line anymore. So I'll select erase tool and I'll click on this line to erase it. Next, I'll switch over to Southwest Isometric. So I'll click on this hotspot of the view cube. You can see that this profile is not in the correct orientation. Let's correct its orientation. So I'll give a rotate 3D command. I'll give a rotate 3D. Now I am asked to select the object to be rotated. I'll select this profile. Next, I'm supposed to specify an axis about which it is to be rotated. I should rotate it about X axis. So I'll click on X axis. Next, it will ask you to specify a point on the X axis. I'll click a point over here. The next prompt is the rotation angle. The rotation angle is obtained using the right hand thumb rule. This rule states that when the user holds the right hand with the thumb pointed towards the axis about which the object is to be rotated, then the curl of rest of the fingers will represent the positive direction of rotation of the object. Hence, it's clear that the rotation angle is 90 degree. So I type 90 and the object got rotated. This is the correct orientation of the profile. Next, we have to extrude this profile. So we can get the dimensions from the 3D object and I have already incorporated it here. And this extrusion thickness is 2.75 cm. After you extrude it, you can take a copy of this object onto this side and this copy is existing at a distance of 40 cm. That means this gap is 40 cm. While copying the side frame onto the other side, I can choose this as the base point and the second point is this particular point which is at a distance of 40 minus 2.75 that is 37.25 cm from the base point. So let's first extrude this profile and then copy the side frame onto the other side. So I'll click on the extrude tool on the home tab and I'll select the profile to be extruded and I'll give a height of extrusion of 2.75. Okay, so that's extruded. Now I'll go to copy tool and I'll select this object and this is the base point. As we have seen before, the second point is at a distance of 37.25 centimeters. So I'll simply type that value. Okay, so you have got the side frame copied onto the other side. This is the right time to create two viewports to work. So I'll just click on a view tab and I'll click on viewport configuration and I'll select two vertical. On this viewport, I'll keep a front elevation and I'll click on front to get a front elevation on the viewport. Next, we have to create a number of cross members. You can see these cross members here. And these two members are identical, they are the same. And uh, these two members are identical. And this member is made up of curvular segments. So each cross member can be created by constructing the corresponding profile. Then we have to extrude that profile through a distance of 34.5 cm. Let's start creating this rectangular profile first. And this rectangle has a dimension of 3 by 8. So let's create that. If you want to construct a rectangle over here, you have to align the UCS on this plane. I'll go to the view tab and I'll select three point option of UCS command and I'll keep my origin here X in this direction and Y. I'll pick all the way onto the top by activating the ortho mode. Just click on that. Now UCS is aligned on this face. Now we will go to home tab and select the rectangle tool and I'll click my first corner of the rectangle over here. Then I'll go to dimension option. When I'm asked to specify the length of the rectangle, I can give 3. When I'm asked to give the width, I can give 8. Now you can pick the opposite corner point of the rectangle over here. Just click a point there. Now you can see the rectangle on the front elevation. Over here, you can position the rectangle properly. So I'll go to Move tool and I'll select this profile. And when I'm asked to specify the base point, just turn off the O snap by pressing the F3 function key. Okay. You can turn off the object snapping. Now click the base point over here. The second point you can pick a point over here after disabling the ortho mode. By pressing the fade key you can do that. I'll just click a point over here. Now it's properly positioned. Next we have to extrude it. So I'll go to extrude tool and I'll select this profile. When I'm asked to give the height of extrusion I can give the value 
Okay, now it's extruded. Next, we have to take a copy of this object all the way to the other end. You can do that in the front viewport. So I'll go to copy tool and I'll select uh, this particular object and you can pick the base point somewhere over here. You can turn on the ortho mode by pressing the F8 function key and you select the second point over here. Okay, just escape to cancel the copy command. We have got a copy here. Next, we will create this cross member. The shape of the cross member is shown in the front viewport and the height of the member is 8 cm. So let us go back to the drawing to create the profile. Before drawing the polyline, I must create two construction lines to indicate the height of the profile in the front viewport. Now I'll just disable the dynamic UCS since it is on. I'll go to polyline command and I'll start my polyline somewhere from this nearest point and I should hold down the shift key and right button of the mouse simultaneously to get the O snap menu. And I'll select nearest option from here and I'll draw a line with arbitrary length. Now I'll just give offset command and I'll give an offset distance of 8 cm and this is select object to offset and site to offset. Okay, now let's create the polyline. So I'll go to polyline tool and I must start the polyline exactly on this face. So the best method is point filters to define the start point of the polyline. So I'll shift right click the mouse to get point filters. If you need any clarifications on point filters, please refer my exclusive video on this topic. Now I'll select dot z off. Okay. I'll click on the center point. That means is it is taken from the center point. Hence the polyline will be drawn on this face. Now I can uh, draw a polyline somewhere from this point, but I can disable the O snap if it is active. I'll press F3 to do that and I'll start a point from here and I'll go to arc, second point, then end point. Likewise, you can proceed to complete the profile. Now, I'll fast forward this operation to save time. To define this point, I must make use of point filters. So I'll go to shift right click, select point filters and dot y off, this end point. Just activate O snap by pressing F3 when you pick this point. Then you pick a point here to define the X coordinate. Then you go to line mode by pressing L. Then you draw a straight line after activating the ortho mode by pressing the F8 function key. Then you pick this point. Then I'll go to arc mode again. Then I'll go to arc option again, then second point and you'll pick a point here and you connect with this end point. You can either just give a close or you can just press enter to go out of this command. This is how you make the profile. I'll erase these two construction lines. I'll click on erase command and erase the lines. Now you can extrude this profile. The height of extrusion is 34.5. So we have created the cross member. Next, I'll create two more cross members, which you see here. First, I'll make this one, then I'll just take a copy of it and I'll keep it here. And the dimensions of the section of this cross member is given here. It is nothing but a rectangle with a length of 2.5 cm and a width of 3.5 cm. You can see that here. And uh, this particular rectangle is at a distance of 10 cm from this end. And each extruded cross members are at 10 cm apart. So I'll first make this one, then I'll take a copy at a distance of 10 cm. So let's proceed. I'll make use of rectangle tool. This time I'll create the rectangle here so that I don't have to use point filters to pick the start point. I'll pick my first corner over here. Then I'll go to dimension option. When I'm asked to give length, I'll give 2.5. When I'm asked to give the width, I'll give minus 3.5 because I want the rectangle to be created downward. Okay, then it'll ask you to select the corner point. I'll just pick a point over here. So we have made a rectangle. Now I'll position it properly and I'll move it to the right location. So I'll click on move command and I'll select this rectangle and I'll move it somewhere over here. Okay, then I'll move it straight down through a distance of 10 centimeter. I'll select move tool again, select this rectangle Base point is this point and uh, distance is 10 cm. So I'll give the value 10. Next, I'll extrude this profile. So I'll click on extrude. I'll select the profile and the height of extrusion is 34.5. This value appears as a default value. So just give an enter. Next, I'll click on copy command 
and I'll select uh, this particular object and this is the base point okay and the distance is 10 centimeter so along with 10 centimeter I should also add the width of the rectangle so 10 plus 3.5 is 13.5 okay now I must position it properly now it has gone slightly outside the side frame so I'll give move again and I'll select this object I'll move it slightly towards left so we have created both the members you can also move both these rectangles slightly towards left side to adjust its position properly now we have created all the cross members next we will create this artistic design between the cross members but when you take a close look on this design you can see that there is a frame surrounding this design so we'll make uh, this frame first then we will create the design and this frame has a width of 1 cm and a thickness of 1 cm so I'll align the UCS with the left face first to create the profile of the frame so I'll go to view tab then I'll click on coordinate palette I'll select left to align the UCS I'll go to home tab and select polyline and I'll start from this point and I'll click here then I'll come all the way down 10 cm because you know that's a distance between those two cross members I'll come back to this point then I'll give a close next I'll offset this profile so I'll click on offset command when I'm asked to give offset distance I'll give 1 cm when I'm asked to select the object to offset I'll select this profile then this is the side just pick a point inside the profile now you can extrude both these profiles I'll just click on extrude and I'll select both these profiles and I'll give a height of extrusion of 1 cm now from the outer box you can subtract the inner box so I'll click on subtract I selected the outer one just give an enter and select the inner box and give another enter now this is the frame which you have created just now now this has to be properly positioned so click on move command and select the object to be moved you can move it slightly towards left side till it reaches to this position just make a click there the next step is to create this design inside the frame you can see the profile of that design over here to create the profile using a polyline we will insert the image or the photograph of the chair then we will trace the profile using a polyline just as we have done for the side frame for that I'll create a left side elevation in this viewport so I'll click on the view tab and I'll select left from here then I'll insert the photograph of the chair here so I'll go to insert tab and I'll select attach and I'll select the image of the chair okay so it will ask you to pick the insertion point which I'll pick here then you just uh, drag the image to specify the height this is just a random height now I'll click on the move command and I'll move it to position it such a way that I can trace the profile comfortably now it is moved and positioned now I'll go back to single viewport configuration by clicking on the viewport button and select single I'll just zoom this area and I'll trace the profile using a polyline so I'll click on polyline command and you can start from here and you go to arc option then you select the second point then you pick the end point then you pick the next end point likewise you can go on picking all the required points while creating such a profile whenever you want to change the curvature you can make use of the second point option of the arc sub option in the polyline command now you know how to trace the profile so I'll just fast forward this procedure to save time now I have reached on to the end point so I'll give a close to complete the profile this is the one I have traced now you can see that I have divided this entire profile into two parts this is basically to simplify the creation process as well as to avoid the problems that might occur due to self intersecting profiles now I'll just complete the other half this is how the completed profile will appear this is just a single piece of artwork next I'll create a surface inside this profile using the region command so I'll give region and I'll select these two boundaries which I have created now the software creates a surface the next step is to join these two profiles using the union command so I'll give union and select these two profiles 
Now these two regions are combined as a single object. Next I'll go to modify panel and I'll click on the mirror command and I'll select this particular region and I'll click on the first point on the mirror line here and I'll turn the ortho mode on and click a point down below to specify the axis. Now I have got an exact mirror image of the profile on the other side. Using the polyline command I'll trace the remaining profiles. You should see to it that all the profiles are closed and continuous while you trace. You can use the same method which you have adopted before. I'll just fast forward this procedure to save time. Now we have created all the profiles which are necessary to make this design. Now you can erase this image since it's not required anymore. So I'll go to erase tool and select this image. Next we will scale this design in such a way that it fits exactly within this available space. So I'll switch over to 2 viewport configuration. I'll go to view tab and I'll select viewport configuration and I'll select 2 vertical. In this viewport, I'll activate and keep a friend elevation. Now you have a friend elevation over here, you just magnify this area. Now I'll click on move tool and I'll select this profile and I'll select this as the base point and click this particular point as the second point. Now it's brought within this space. Next you can go to scale command. So I'll click on scale and I'll select these two profiles to be scaled and I'll choose this particular point as the base point. Now I can go to reference option. It'll ask you for a reference length. Reference length is this length. You can click this point and this point and it'll ask you for the new length. New length is this length. Just click on that point. Now it fits within this space. Next you can extrude this profile. Now I'll just click on extrude button and when I'm asked to select object, I'll type the letter P. P indicates the previous selection. Okay, just give one more enter. Now when I'm asked to give the height of extrusion, I can give minus one centimeter. Just type minus one. Now it's extruded. You can see that here. Just switch over to Southwest Isometric and see what you have done. Now we'll change the visual style to realistic and this is how it will appear. Now let's combine all these objects as a single unit using the union command because these objects are going to share the same finish that is wooden finish. So I'll click on union and I'll select all these objects. Since it remains as a single unit it will be easy for you to assign materials. Next we will create the cushion but before making the cushion I'll change the color to a different color. So I'll type control 1 to get the properties panel and I'll uh, select a color. I'll click on select color and I'll choose this shade. Let it be say 21. I've got the shade as the current color. Now I'll draw the profile or the cushion using the polyline. But before making the polyline, you have to align the UCS with this plane. So I'll click on the view tab and I'll click on top option of the coordinate panel. Now the UCS is aligned on this plane. Now you just go to polyline command and you pick a point over here. Then you can pick the next point here. Then I'll hold on the shift key and the right button of the mouse simultaneously to get the object snap menu. Then you pick a point over here and you have to get a corresponding point here. So again shift right click and you take perpendicular and you pick a point here. So you have got all the points. Now you just give close to complete the polyline. Okay. So this is the profile. Now you can just extrude this profile using the extrude command. Select it and you give the height of extrusion as 5.5 centimeters. So I'll type the value 5.5. Now you can just uh, fill it all the corners using the fillet command. So I'll click on uh, fillet. When I'm asked to specify the fillet radius, you can just go to radius and you give a value of 4.5. Okay. Now you select this edge. Then it will ask you for a radius once again. Just give an enter to accept the existing radius. Pick this edge, this edge and select all the rest of the edges to complete the fillet. When you magnify this area, you can see that the side faces of the cushion overlaps with the side frame of the chair. So how will you eliminate this problem? For that, I'll take a copy of both the chair and the cushion and I'll keep it over here. Okay, then you just give a subtract, select the cushion, give an enter and select the chair. Now the overlapping corners of the cushion is removed and the problem is resolved. Now we can erase the existing cushion. Okay, then you move the cushion in such a way that this corner coincides with this corner. 
Look at the corner. We have neat corners without overlaps. Now we have completed the 3D model of the chair. As I have promised you in the beginning, by now you would have learned a number of concepts and tricks in AutoCAD to trace profiles. This is another version of the same chair with the realistic materials applied. I have provided the fabric material as well as the teakwood material along with the video description. You can just download it and make a try. Do keep in touch with me when you try this tutorial and get back to me for any clarifications. That's all for now. I'll catch you in my next tutorial. Thanks for your time.